Hi guys, Will Terry here. I'm um, excited to give you this video. Before I do, I'm just going to tell you, uh, you can always contact me on my blog at willterry.blogspot.com. Um, and I don't always get to the comments on my YouTube videos, so if I, if I don't get to yours, I apologize ahead of time. But again, you can always contact me through my blog. Okay, so this is, I, I put together what I think every illustration student should know. Um, and I teach illustration at a university here in Utah uh, at UVU. And so what I'm going to tell you, I've told my students there, and I hope this really helps you. Okay, so I'm going to start by saying, saying goodbye to the word maybe. Okay, so let's start talking about what you want as an illustration student, as a beginning illustrator, as somebody who wants to get into the field. If you're like me, uh, when I first started, what I wanted more than anything else was to make a living doing what I wanted to do, which was to draw and paint, to paint for a living. So basically, I wanted to earn money doing what I love to do. Uh, so let's talk about the way things have been in the past, and then we're going to move to the present and future. Okay, so just five or ten years ago, in order to, and, and maybe longer, but, uh, you know, in the last little bit, things have, have changed a lot. We're going to talk about that. But in the last five or ten years, um, you had to go through a middleman. So uh, you needed to find a person with money to be able to get your illustrations out there in the marketplace, uh, either for products or services, uh, things like that. So you needed, you needed executives, you needed publishers, you needed to get to the people that were in charge of hiring artists, right? Um, if you're an illustrator, if you're an animator, if you're a musician, a uh, filmmaker, an author, if you're if you're an artist, you needed to basically uh, you needed someone to pick you or choose you uh, in order for your stuff to get published. Uh, from the days of Caravaggio all the way to Dr. Seuss. Um, Caravaggio needed the church, needed uh, rich people to, to pay him, uh, needed, to, needed to impress them enough so that they would say, yes, we will hire you to paint X, all the way up to Dr. Seuss, who had to attract a publisher um, to be able to get his message, his stories out there. Um, so, in publishing, there basically have been two groups, those that have been told yes, and those that have been told maybe or a flat out no even. Um, the group that has been told yes is a small group. Okay, uh, what about everybody else? Is there room for everybody else or for a lot of other people to be picked, to be chosen, to be able to be published, to be able to be hired, to be able to be uh, utilized as an illustrator? Okay, so First off, publishers can only publish so many books in a year. In fact, most publishers have a list of, uh, of a number of books that they're willing to publish in a year. And I've even heard some editors talk about the fact that sometimes they, they, they almost cry inside because they have to turn down a book that they would love to publish. But all the slots are filled that year, and so they turn it down. And sometimes those books get, go on to get picked up by another publisher. Um, because they're so good, but there just wasn't room in the year that they submitted it. The first year, maybe it, it takes them another year or two or three or four um, to finally get published. Okay, so now we enter into, oh, let's say 2008, when the economy starts to really go south and, um, and things start to, the economy starts to really suffer. Uh, at the same time, in the last 10 or 15 years, uh, we've had digital media taking off, and so we've got this. We've got um, story apps, and we've got digital ebooks, um, and they're all the, because of the, that explosion. That started to compete with print books, so that so that's a factor right now that's going on. Uh, and I'm just going to read this next part because I've, I've taken notes that I, I want to make sure I get all this stuff in there. Um, if the internet has exposed many more talented authors and illustrators. And with sites like Pinterest, DeviantArt, Illustration Friday, uh, blogs, etc., artists are learning from each other and online. Online education getting better and better and cheaper than ever before. Sites like Lynda.com 
a new Masters Academy org, Folio Academy, that's one of mine. Uh, SVS, a story, um, a School of Visual Storytellers, which we're just getting going right now. You got the Lamp Post Guild by Corey Godby and Justin Gerard. Um, all kinds of online schools, online uh, ways to learn to to uh, improve your um, your education. It's getting cheaper and it's getting easier to attain, and you can have access from some of the best instructors in the world. Um, now, at the same time, I want to I want to insert a little disclaimer here I work for the university uh, I teach at uh, UVU and I am definitely not saying that online excuse me that online learning is better than uh, learning at a university so here's some of the differences it's actually uh, the way I look at it is it's it's a really great companion to be able to combine the things that you can find online uh, that you might not be able to find at your local university from instructors that you can't find there but uh, the things that you don't get, typically speaking, from an online school uh, or online classes or online tutorials is financial aid. You don't get uh, long-term exposure to uh, your intended field often. Um, you're not typically learning from other students, which you do at the university for sure. Uh, networking, and in fact, Learning from other students is is huge. I see it all the time. In fact, most of my students learn just as much from each other as they do um, from me or from the other teachers. Uh, and then accountability on assignments. So a lot of times with online tutorials and schools and stuff, it's more information that's being given out, but there's not as much accountability. So there's a huge reason to use a university if you can. But my point in all this is that the talent pool right now is going is skyrocketing because uh, the internet has made it possible to find illustrators all over the world uh, and the amount of talent that's out there is amazing uh, I used to think that there were a lot of talented people uh, 10 or 20 years ago and when we when everybody would put their stuff in the workbook and it was about that thick and now you go on a site like DeviantArt or you go on a site like Pinterest uh, and you look at blogs, and it's amazing how much how much talent is out there. And guess what? If if I'm seeing it, if you're seeing it, art directors are seeing it, and they're they have access to hire so many more people than they used to. What I'm just telling you about the the online learning is with it becoming easier and cheap, that's providing access to people who don't live near a university to now enter the enter. And, increase their skills and become competitive as well so the talent pool is going way up so my question is is there going to be room for all those talented people to get published okay is there room enough for them to all get picked so we're going to talk about that later a little bit um, so I've been told yes and it's been really nice the, I've I, I've loved the recognition, the speaking engagements that I've gotten, of course, the money, um, and of course, more work. Um, so you might be asking, well, if you've already been picked, Will, if you've already been you've already been accepted into the publishing world, why do you care, and why are you even bringing this up as a subject? And the reason is because I feel like one of my callings is to be a teacher, um, and I feel very strongly about truth in education. I don't like it when uh, students are given half truths, when students are given um, outdated information, uh, especially in the university setting because they're paying top dollar for their education there and they deserve to know what's going on out in the world. So I feel like I don't see a whole lot of people talking about a lot of this online. So um, I've actually picked myself to talk about this. Um, Okay, so um, where do I want to end up with this? Um, oh, okay. So uh, guess what? You've been told maybe, a lot of people have been told maybe, maybe you can get published, maybe we'll pick you, maybe you'll be good enough someday, maybe you can do this. And my answer to you is that for the last five or ten years you've been told yes but you may not have heard it um, you may be afraid of the word yes you may be afraid of the opportunities that are awaiting you right now and we're going to talk about that in the next video so please look for the same title part two where I'm going to continue and talk about 
<clears throat> what Seth Godin calls picking yourself. Okay, please join.